when somebody comes here for the first time, what is it like in terms of how does your tour start off? All right, so when children gravitate to the side I am, because they want to know how it works. Mm -hmm. How comes you don't plug it in and it works and it presses it? True. You know, those are the questions that ask. The, you know, the dance is really special to us because that dance was also used on the plantation to talk to each other. If you notice when they are dancing, they would had rice and peas mm -hmm. uh, with vegetable rundown. Mm -hmm. What does Aki. vegetable rundown consist of? Okay. The Maroons have a very important and interesting culture, especially for us who live in the Caribbean. Today I'll be at a Safo yard in Charleston where I learn about their dancing, their instruments, and how they use all of this to convey information. Karee's uh, Quest. Travel different from the rest. You're watching Karee's Quest. It's always an adventure when you're watching. Karee's Quest. Whenever you're at Charleston, you have to ask for the lady of the moment, Colonel Marcia Douglas. How are you? I'm fine. I'm back here again. Welcome. The, the treat was lovely. Let me greet you in Maroon language, Mante. Mante? Yes. The treat was lovely. I love the fact that the kids enjoyed themselves. And I told you that I had to come back to find out more about our Maroon heritage. I mean, Maroons are... are so important in our fight for freedom. Mm -hmm. Good. This is a, a Safu's yard. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still doing tours? Well, we had stopped for a while, but we are going to take it up back now on a slow pace. So, therefore, we're doing small groups. Small groups. Preferably um, groups that are ten or less. Ten or less, and hiking group. Oh, a hiking group. Yeah. No. When somebody comes here for the first time, what is it like in terms of how does your tour start off? Alright, so when they come here for the first time, what I normally say when I talk to them is embrace yourself to be a part of us. So it's that you're going to live your Kingston life or your Montego Bay life or wherever you yes. live life out there. But you're coming with the, visual, um, of, with the visuality of living a maroon life. So you are personalizing yourself with the maroon so when they come here first you get their minds open so you welcome them mm -hmm. when you welcome them mm -hmm. you introduce yourself to them mm -hmm. as a family and a friend then giving them all that warm introduction now it's covid time so you know you go through the protocols of washing hands wearing masks testing sanitizing right, right? then you begin with the tour in itself so you introduce this, the, the tour, which begins on the side of the Asafuya, starting from when bamboo flute was used in, mm -hmm. um, go through the past, um, the middle passage, right. and then. Uh, where are you originally? This maroon set of maroons. Where are you guys originally from? So we were first living in Old Crawford Town, okay. and then 1739, after the treaty was signed, the maroon moved from Old Crawford Town closer to the northern shoreline which is this settlement okay we are only two and a half miles away because from the northern shoreline you are the only set of maroons or the lineage right of maroons that are on a flat yes <laughs> and that's because all four parents decided hey soak up the sun on pristine beaches ride horses through the ocean feel the zipline rush with kareem's quest tours discover jamaica's hidden gems find amazing places to stay and learn the secrets of our island plants. Your unforgettable adventure awaits. We don't want to be fighting with each other over this part of land that's Old Crawford Town. Mm -hmm. So it is best that we give up this part of land and we move down to Charlestown, which they had located this area mm -hmm. and called it Charlestown. Then four, then, then four set of families 
people are really living inside here. Some went to Moretown, East Portland, and mm -hmm. some to Scott's House in Mary. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Moretown, I can find my family. And if I go to Scott's House, it's the same. So it's so you'll find hard. Douglas there. Just about the door. Mm, okay. And then if it's not Douglas, then it's my if it's not my father's name, then it's my mother's name. So it's not hard to really go in the Maroon community mm. and be selecting someone to really marry. Uh, really <laughs> yeah, marry right. Her. That is true. Yeah. When you are when you are going through the museum, what are some of the items that stick with people more than anything else? All right. So some of the items that stick with people that people tend to gravitate to, and if you just call the name and move over, they call you back your attention. So they would like to hear about the copper pot or the cauldron. Okay. They, the cauldron, that's the sugar? That's right. the pot for the sugar? For the sugar, right. Mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me a little bit more about the cauldron. So with so, that, how was it used? And it how? was used back then to boil sugar. So mm -hmm. they would set it on the fire. Then they fill it up with cane juice. Mm -hmm. Let it boil for a while, skimming the top to get molasses. Now when they had all that molasses out of it, then they would decide what type of sugar they were making. Okay. So they would start to make a type of sugar. Now my grandfather told me that his father, tell him that in days gone by, if a slave were really bad, or contagious, or viscerous, in order for them to know if the sugar was at its right boiling peak, mm. when they were giving trouble, the slave master would dip their finger in, oh. and then the skin would strip from the bone. Oh. And so they would know that, yes, it is. So there, there's a lot of things to the sugar pot, why um, in Maroon communities they hold on to it. So it's not only a, a weapon that the British has used as on, on their foreparent, mm -hmm. but it's a memory of how it gets here by ship and then they had to take it because their plantation, most of them, were on a hill area mm -hmm. or a distant away from the main road. And so they had to carry the, the, the sugar pot, I mean, to the spot. Now, imagine that sugar pot inside the museum coming all the way from Samboy. Yeah. How did it get up there? And I, I mean, five or six persons can lift it like that. Yeah, because How did it's, it get it's, up there? it's made of what? Steel? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is made in England. Mm -hmm. um, Jones, Co. and Bristol mm -hmm. was the name of the company that made those spot. I'm not even sure if that company is still That's around. A lot of centuries. So, so that one is a big one for persons. What right. else do people love? Uh, people, well, children were, are so amused about the sad iron. Mm -hmm. So, if you notice today, the little girl was like, Are you in the clothes? Yes. She, uh, children gravitate to the sad iron because they want to know how it works. Mm -hmm. How comes you don't plug it in and it works and it press it? True. You know, those are the questions that I ask. The first time I talk about the sad iron, was with my daughter one morning when the electricity was out. I was using one to get her uniform ready. And uh, she go to school and she tell it to the children and the teacher asked me to come in and talk to the class about it. Mm -hmm. When I go there, mm -hmm. it's like everybody want to know how it operates. Can you put it on the fire now? Mm -hmm. Can you clean it off now and let us see? All that. <laughs> so it's that it's like an experience that they never had. Mm -hmm. So they gravitate to that. Well, some people is amused by the money because you know nowadays our money or just what you remember this is the first place i've ever been to and seen a shilling note yeah i believe you me there is more where that one come from wow mm. yes okay then. so the 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 the, 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 the stages of the money just mm -hmm. imagine in your days how much you used to get for lunch mm -hmm. in my day mm -hmm. i used to get one dollar for one week can you give your child a dollar now, not even for an half hour? No. Not even for... So it's right. like, when I say one dollar, my daughter would say, one dollar, mommy, where you do with that? Or they have a saying where they say, where that go? You know, so it's just like, it's, it's out of the picture altogether. True. But then when you have it in stage, this is what our twenty dollar look like. This is what our five dollar So you're bringing like. back real things to show kids what the history was, was like was like so it's taken from the past bringing this must to be the a future. lovely tour for kids who are in like fourth form and doing history believe me they're when, supposed when to the love sba it. question come mm -hmm. that is when i find out how much they really enjoy doing history oh. right because the question that asks about the maroons how can they this did the maroon that in what century the maroon so all those just come in the picture and you can see whether or not a child take interest in history at school mm -hmm. or whether or not they would like to do more about history or 
if the history is well taught in school. So these are some of the really good experiences. Afterwards, you take persons to this to observe this lovely dance ritual. Mm -hmm. What is that ritual called, and and why why is it so important? So it's a cremante dance. Cremante. Right. The no, cremante is coming all the way out of Ghana. Okay. Well, some of our tribe that came here to Jamaica as a Maroon are cremante tribe. So most of them would speak the cremante language, which mm -hmm. I say to you. Made I see it would have been thank you, which is Cremante language. Okay. Mante, mm -hmm. which is welcome, which is Cremante language. Okay. Aquaba, mm -hmm. it's like good morning, good evening. It's Cremante language. Mm -hmm. So some people still speak those languages. Now the dance is really special to us because that dance was also used on the plantation to talk to each other. If you notice when they are dancing, they would use eye contact. So the dance would, you know, let them see each other, let them see that, hey, I'm going to the side, but I'm not feeling good. Or the mm -hmm. spirit is somewhere near me. And, you know, you can mm -hmm. see the features change, you can see everything when they're dancing. It was also used as a technique to say, well, to the mountains or to the river, or, you know, mm -hmm. we, are, we are going to do our thing. You know, they, they didn't speak it out like that. Mm -hmm. Even though they use the, the English and the Kramanti language to to um, produce patwa, you understand? They didn't really speak it out like so that. So it was communication, they, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the dance could, um, would have used for when there's going to be a wedding um, celebration for that moment, or when a bride, uh, a groom chooses a bride, mm -hmm. or for telling someone that a baby is born. And, you know, they, they use the dance in many different ways to say, well, then, we are doing it. The songs in itself speak. Um, why they are you lost and why are you? Mm -hmm. Just imagine they are going to fight. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to start the fight? Okay. So when they say, why they are you lost and why are you? That's how we are a fight. We are going up the hill. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that you're going to the hill to really do a fight. So, and I noticed that you use your horns and everything like that to convey right. a message. So, message, surreptitious messages were conveyed through different means, through, through dance, different means, dance, horns, everything like that, drums. drums. Yes. Mm. So all of these um, speak to us. I, I I've always here. wondered, doing you know, on even in our high schools, why persons use the recorder to teach us music. It should be the drums. I was saying the same thing, and so that's why some of our drummers, they go to the schools and they teach them how to play the drums. Yeah, I think even here, if you notice, after where we're long finished, the kids go to video playing on the drum. They can play. Uh, uh, yeah, I listened to them rhythm. playing the dembe earlier, and I was like, Yeah, mm. they can play an entire rhythm. In wow. fact, in our celebration, when the kids are performing, it's not the adult who play for them. They're all kids playing, mm -hmm. all children playing, and all children dancing, wow. all children singing. No and, and that's for like your yearly festival? That's like my yearly festival. When is that normally held? So our date includes the 23rd of June. Right. So we normally have it on a four-day um, period. So if the 23rd fall on the weekend, mm -hmm. we'll go from the 20, from the 20th to the 23rd. But if it falls somewhere within Thursday, we'll probably start from the 23rd itself and hands two or three days after, or maybe we'll start two days before mm -hmm. and then two day, and, and a day after or so. And, and just for clarity, there are five maroon settlements, yes, right? Yes, five maroon settlements. So we have Charleston, where we are now. Where we are now. We, we have, have Moretown. Right, Moretown, yes. We have Aconpon Town. That's right. We have Scotts Hall. Right, you are. And the next one I can't Flagstaff. remember. Flagstaff. Where? Flagstaff, which Flagstaff. is in Trelawney. In Trelawney. And now Flagstaff uh, is when he really moved to a place called Maroon Town in Trelawney. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was where they left from and go over to a compound town. Okay. So Flagstaff is and a compound close. actually is one, mm -hmm. but divided after two brothers start fussing over who should leave where. So that's why a compound and a group go over to the place called a compound town mm -hmm. while the other wow. person stays. Is there any festival that incorporates all the maroon towns? Yes, those that festival, the, okay. the maroon festival for each date of the maroon communities. So in Charleston, we are in June, so Akompong and the other maroons would come up mm -hmm. in 
August 1st would be, would be Scott Saul. So everybody meets up at Scott Saul. Mm -hmm. Whenever he was there, Fallen would be Moortown. So everybody would meet in Moortown. Um, Flagstaff is March 1st. Mm -hmm. So everybody so meets missed. March 1st. And a compound town would be the 6th of January. Mm -hmm. So everybody meet on the 6th of January. If we don't meet physically, mm -hmm. like we did this year, we mm -hmm. do virtually. But we do incorporate everyone. Colonel Douglas, it was a pleasure talking to you. I have so much respect for freedom fighters across the world, but more so Maroons in Jamaica because I am Jamaica, right? So I'll have some of your item food now. Which is lovely. All right. Our foreparents used to say, our, our grandparents used to say, you can turn your hand, you will make pressure. All right. That's true. Much yes. respect. Blessings. To find all the Kareem's Quest content in one place, visit the website kareemsquest.com. You'll see colorful adventure stories, a lot of pictures of Jamaica's beautiful landscape, and articles that highlight the many unique things about Jamaica. It's all at kareemsquest.com. After talking to the colonel, I had some food with the group and the food was so lovely that I had to ask for the chef. Now, Chef Claudia Brown, how are you? I'm good. What did we eat today? Okay, actually you had rice and peas mm -hmm. uh, with vegetable rundown. Mm -hmm. What does actually, vegetable rundown consist of? Okay, vegetable rundown consists of coconut milk boiled down, mm -hmm. then we had all types of vegetables. No artificial season. Okay. All natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then on the side that you have aki done without salt fish mm -hmm. because it's all vegetarian, and you have steamed pork choy <laughs> along with fried sweet potato. Yes. And your raw veg. And right. Oh yeah. You, but you did the rice and peas. So you only serve that type of ital food, so to speak? No, we do chicken, we do pork, we do fish, we do to order. Okay. But the order. main thing is that ital well, food, right? The main thing is all natural vegetarian meal. Do guests and tourists like it? Yes. I love the rondo. My, my special is the rondo. Okay. Mm. And what about the drinks? What were we drinking? Okay, for the juice you had mango blend with June plum, mm -hmm. there was a bit of apple, OTT apple, and there was ginger and there was also coconut water. So you're keeping everything fresh, healthy, fresh, and natural. Right. All right. Chef, it was a pleasure. Thank and you. And we enjoyed the food immensely. Okay. Now that my belly is full, I'm here with Captain as well as Raspadam as well as <laughs> so many other things, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Master so the last master. time, the last time you did a piece for me and you're having new music out there what are some of the music that people can find yeah so if you search on um, our digital platform you'll find songs like merciful and i grade for right now but um sooner i'll be dropping one called live good you know telling you that in in, in life you have to be confident confident to pursue whatever you need you know so we have to send out the, the positive message throughout the world so other people can get to pursue their dreams and you know, a big motivation towards life itself, you know? And that's what we need right now. Whenever persons come here to Charleston, this is a person who also does the tour, a lot of the hiking tours, right? Yes, definitely. definitely. How long does it take to hike that mountain? Um, depending on which one of the tour, like for the 18th century coffee plantation, which is um, a slavery ruins, mm -hmm. it will take you like two hours both way, two hours to get there, two hours back. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go to the lookout point, which is Sambo Hill, it will take you like three and a half hours both way. So three and a half hours to the peak <laughs> and three and a half hours back. All right, because wow. it's a yeah, it's a challenge. It's yeah. a challenge of life. It's a challenge to show that no matter what what is the challenges of life, what yeah. whatever life challenges are, you can you overcome. can overcome them. You are also a master drummer. Yes, I am. Right, and so last time we used the this drum right here. Yes, <laughs> right, and I'd love for you to just give us a small history lessons of the different drums. All right. So, being as you start talking about this drum, mm -hmm. this drum 
is the djembe um shaped like a wine glass and this drum is originally an african drum this is coming straight from the continent of, of africa straight from ghana all right okay yeah so this drum actually travels the sounds actually travels for like two miles oh right? really when you eat it yes wow yes all right so, so is it is it, it does it have the strongest resonance then in terms of would it be stronger than a Congo drum per se? Yes, because it's a universal drum, so it can be used to play all different types of rhythm. Whether you want to play hip hop, jazz, whatever, you just have to be creative within your own space mm -hmm. and your own self, and you can use this drum. Is there a song that you can, like a popular reggae song that you can say, well, they were using the gem before? Um, well, I've, I've seen them in a, in a, in a lot of um, video, but they mainly use them to like play like um, the Naya Bingi session within the, the, those rhythm. Okay, all right, good. See me? Mm -hmm. Right here mm -hmm. is the quart. Like you just say, a quart, a rum, a quart, a quart, or anything. This is right. the quart made from a bamboo and two sticks. Mm -hmm. All right? So, this instrument is used to um, complement the shaker or the maracas. Uh -huh. Alright, or the greater. Yeah. So this is this instrument played um, used to do the same stuff as those instruments. But the only persons used to use this instrument, this instrument is the maroons. Like Charlestown and Scott Saw. You won't see this anywhere else. Mm. Yes. Okay. Right? So quart. Alright. Quart. Mm -hmm. Right here, we call this the Goombe. Alright? Some people um, would call this a kete. Okay. A natural Rastafari would say, oh, kete. But we, the Maroon, we call this kumbe. Alright? This is the traditional name for uh, um, What's this the gem. sound of the gumbe and how is it different than the jemba? Alright. This is a more lighter drum. Okay. The bass, from the bass, yes, the bass from the jembe, even the bass, is a lot more deeper. Mm -hmm. Right? So this can be used to complement a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but the djembe is more deeper into, into everything as well as light on the heads as well. Okay. So the djembe um, is more universal or even over the, the, the gombe. Okay. But this is a traditional drum that we use for healing purposes as well. Alright? Mm -hmm. Yes. And right here, is where everything all started from. This drum is called the Cromanti drum, or we call it the bench drum. So back into slavery, they used to the drums having this round look, right. this round shape, mm -hmm. in order for us to hide our history and our secret, we change it to this shape. So the slave, like a stool, a yes, like a yes, that's why I call the bench drum. Yeah. So the slave master will hear drum playing on, this, uh, on, the, on the plantation because African love to play music while working. Mm -hmm. Because they say everything that sound, the way you walk, the way you talk, everything that you do is a rhythm. So the African love to play rhythm and sing while they're working. It gives them an extra energy. Even hosts today do that as well. True. So um, with this drum now, the slave master will hear music playing on the plantation. They will ride off on their horse, going up on the plantation just to view and to see what's going on. But when they go, they see this drum placed like this. And they take out the two navels, which is right here. Mm -hmm. So this centerpiece, this navel that come push up the skin to tune it, mm -hmm. will just go down flat. So it, it will feel like a cushion. So when you come, oh, my slaves make a nice bench for me. Oh, oh, beautiful, oh, wonderful you are. And he sit on it. And he's, he's there looking around for the drum. Never know that he was sitting on the drum. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the way our ancestors preserve the culture, preserve our heritage. Okay, then Just I, by shape. the sound of this drum. Yes, so you only play this drum here. Alright. Mm. <laughs> so it, it, it has its own sound. And this is normally called the chromantic healing drum. So we don't do our healing ceremony without this drum. This is the center of our healing. Right? Raspadam. Yes. As usual, this is great knowledge for me. Thank you very much for sharing so much rich 
history yes from our ancestors and for retaining it over the years yes, sir. because that is very important so definitely much respect yes sir every time you know right. every time just been watching another lovely episode of Kareem's Quest. I've learned so much about Maroons and Maroon Town and so many ways that they have used to retain their history as well as the importance that instruments play in them conveying messages and celebrating life. As usual people, stay safe and walk good. <laughs>